In today's PowerPoint, we are going to look at different types of exchange rates. So far, we've looked at a free floating exchange rate, um, but we will look at some other types of exchange rate systems. So the different types of exchange rates. One, we could have a fixed exchange rate, where one currency is fixed or pegged against another. And to do this, the government has to use vast amounts of foreign currency reserves, and we'll see why as we move through this PowerPoint. Two, a floating exchange rate where market forces of supply and, and demand determine what the exchange rate will be. And three, a managed or a dirty float where there's an upper and lower limit set to where the currency can fluctuate. It still uses foreign currency reserves, but not as much as the fixed rate and it tends to add stability. So a fixed exchange rate system. In a fixed exchange rate system, exchange rates are fixed by the central bank of each country and are not permitted to change in response to changes in supply and demand of currencies. Maintaining the value of the currency at its fixed rate requires constant intervention by the central bank or government by buying or selling reserve currencies, as well as making other adjustments in the domestic economy. So before we go into, um, into to, um, the fixed exchange rate with, um, with more depth, I just want to make this perfectly clear that you cannot have a country where the central bank decrees, announces that, um, that the exchange rate will exchange at this certain amount or that it will be pegged to a certain amount and then hands off and um, so be it. They have to intervene with using their foreign currency reserves because it will be the market forces that want to either push the, um, the value up or down and the currency reserves will bring it into the uh, limit or the amount that the government is, um, is seeking. And th this will be clearer in a few slides. So one, let's assume that the fixed rate is below the equilibrium. So in other words, the, the government uh, wants the exchange rate to be trading at a lower, uh, excuse me, at, a, at a, um, a lower value, but with the market forces of supply and demand, it's currently trading at a higher amount than the government wants it to. So, so what ends up happening is that the government sells their own currency from their foreign exchange reserves and buys overseas currencies. So we can see this here. Here is the fixed rate that the government is interested in maintaining. This is where the currency would be without government invention, intervention. So what the government does is that they buy up foreign currencies and in so doing so, they bring their own currency to the foreign exchange market, thereby increasing the supply of their own currency in the foreign um, exchange market. And so the value has gone from here to where they want it to be. So it's through the actions of the, the government or the central bank selling off their currency to the foreign um, currency market, whereby we reach this fixed rate. It does not happen on its own and it does not happen because the government says so. So let's look at another situation where the equilibrium rate, so again, if it's trading in the market, is going to be below the fixed rate. So it's below the rate that the government wants the currency to be trading at. So in other words, we're going to have a surplus of the national currency. So what the solution is that the government buys up their currency with their foreign reserves. When they buy the currency, their foreign reserves will fall. So they're going to buy up their own currency from the foreign um, exchange market, reducing thereby the, um, I'm sorry, just a second. When they're buying up their own currency, this means the demand for their currency within the foreign exchange market is going to increase. So you can see through these actions that they do have to use uh, quite a uh, vast amount of the foreign currency reserves. So here we have the fixed rate is here. This was a situation we described a minute ago where left to its own devices, the currency would be below where, where they ideally wanted at the fixed rate. So they take their own currency, go and visit the foreign exchange market. I'm excuse me, they take foreign currency, 
go and visit the foreign exchange market and buy up their own currency. So hence, increasing the demand for their own currency. By increasing the demand for their own currency within the foreign exchange market, they've gone from a lower value to the target or the fixed rate value. Again, through intervention and not simply because the government says this is how it's going to trade and at what value. So using official reserves to maintain the exchange rate, there's a risk that the country may run out of reserves of foreign exchange because they have to use so much in order to uh, prop up the system. So they may run out of reserves of foreign exchange when a country is faced with deficits over a long period of time. This would put downward pressure on the currency and the, cur and the country would need to use its foreign currency reserves to keep on buying domestic currency. In such a situation, the government must use additional measures. So other measures they could use, they could limit imports, such as a contractionary fiscal and monetary policy, so that people are buying less, but they're also buying fewer imports, and protectionist trade policies. So let's just um, pause for a moment. So if they're li limiting imports, what they're doing is limiting um, their citizens from taking their currency to the foreign exchange market and exchanging it for other currencies. Because when they do um, go and buy imports and when they do um, buy the other currencies, they would be increasing the supply of their domestic currency on the foreign exchange market and making it worth less. So we're trying to look at how can, uh, what are other measures so we can prop up the value. We could inc increase interest rates to attract financial capital from other countries because we know if we have higher real interest rates relative to other countries, other countries will be interested in investing in our bank accounts and um, the demand for our currency will increase, hence increasing its value. And lastly, they could impose exchange controls. And these are restrictions on the quantity of foreign exchange that can be bought by domestic residents, thereby restricting the outflow of domestic funds. And an example that I can think of is um, in Poland, um, my own father has bought a condo and he's interested uh, possibly in selling it, but there are restrictions in Poland of how much money he can take out of, um, of Poland. And so, so he can't easily um, exchange the slotty for, for other currencies. So here is a, um, an example. Short of dollars, Venezuela tightens currency exchange controls. So what they've actually done in Venezuela is that they've uh, lowered the amount that travelers may spend abroad on their credit cards by half. And so what they're trying to do is prevent um, the Venezuelan uh, currency from, from leaving the country. Changing the fixed exchange rate. If a country experiences serious difficulties in maintaining the fixed exchange rate, a different fixed rate can be set. So in this system, we're dealing with a fixed exchange rate. We're going to use a lower value is going to be called a devaluation and a newer higher value will be called a revaluation. So watch the terminology because on a data analysis, you could be asked to define either of these terms. And so you would have to say that it's a change in value for either higher or lower within a fixed exchange rate system. And just as a reminder, when we're dealing with a free floating exchange rate system, we use the term appreciate and depreciate. So please watch the terminology. So let's uh, jump to the exchange rates in a managed float. So this is important to realize that this is in essence the current exchange rate system in use since, since 1973 for most of the world's countries. So in this system, we have exchange rates that are for the most part free to float to their market levels, meaning their equilibrium levels over long periods of time. 
but the central banks periodically intervene in order to stabilize them over the short term. So they don't want short term fluctuations where the currency is, is going up and down and up and down. But over the long term, um, it, it is more or less free to float to their market levels. In a managed float, the currency is supposed to move towards its long term equilibrium position determined by the market. The central bank intervenes to prevent major and abrupt fluctuations um, that may be dis destabling for the, for the economy. So what could the central bank or government do to keep the currency from fluctuating too much? Well, they could use foreign currency reserves to buy and sell currencies. They could change interest rates um, they could also use um, demand side policies so influencing aggregate demand so whether they wanted aggregate demand to be lower and so hence would people would buy fewer imports um, as an example um let's see what else oh, they could use protectionism again if they're trying to limit uh, the amount of um, of imports and i'll just put etc now let's look at pegging exchange rates a number of developing countries peg or fix their currencies to the u.s dollar and a number of transition economies peg their currency to the euro the pegged currency is allowed to fluctuate within a narrow range above or below relative to the dollar or the euro, and the central bank again intervenes to keep it within the limits. So in this case, um, the, the currency is allowed to fluctuate from within this band, and then the, the, country, uh, the country is uh, satisfied that, that they've reached their goals. So the problem of undervalued or overvalued or undervalued currencies. Overvalued currencies. We know that imports become cheaper and many developing countries have wanted cheap imports, particularly with capital goods to help them build up their industrialization. We do know that exports become more expensive and domestic producers can be hurt because now they have to compete with these cheaper imports. Undervalued currencies. We know that exports become relatively less expensive to foreign buyers, and some developing countries have used undervaluation as a method to expand their export industries, expand their economies, and therefore also increase employment. But it can be considered an unfair competitive advantage, and there can be retaliation from other countries and, and a lot of sort of disagreement and discourse if someone feels that someone is unfairly or a country is unfairly devaluing or undervaluing their currency. And currency undervaluation can be considered a form of cheating and are sometimes referred to as a dirty float because of the tremendous advantage it gives you with your exports. So here's um, uh, a case where the, the US Senate um, is trying to propose a bill aimed at undervalued currencies. And so um, China, it says here, blasted a proposal, you, a proposed US bill that would punish countries for undervaluing their currency, saying it would undermine the global economy and potentially lead to a trade war. Um, and then furthermore, um, they're criticizing the US Senate measures that would slap tariffs on Chinese imports if the US is thinking that, that China is undervaluing their, um, their currency. So you can see that it does create um, quite a bit of discourse, or can. Monetary policy and conflicting objectives in an open economy. So this is important to, to realize, we've covered this before, but any economy has three internal macroeconomic objectives. They want price stability, full employment and economic growth. In an open economy, excuse me, an open economy has the additional objectives of, achieve, of achieving a reasonable balance of trade and balance of payments, as well as avoiding sharp fluctuations in its exchange rate. 
So we'll be looking at balance of trade and balance of payments, but in essence, what they're talking about is a is a reasonable balance between how much you are exporting and how much you are importing. So we have an order uh, we have adding to these three objectives, sort of balancing or or, or managing imports and exports and avoiding uh, sharp fluctuations in the exchange rate. But economies, this is no surprise, may be unable to achieve all of these objectives simultaneously. And governments often find that pursuing a policy to correct one problem may create a problem in another area. So let's look at the next slide of conflicts that Latvia faced in maintaining a fixed exchange rate. So the Latvian economy has suffered the worst two-year decline in output on record and will have trouble recovering with, with its currency tied to the euro. So what happens in this scenario is that so Latvia has got a tremendous decline in output. So um, uh, the, the economy is, is, um, is not doing well. So you would think in terms of a monetary policy that they would like to adapt is that they could um, reduce interest rates to try and stimulate aggregate demand. But because the problem is because they have also pegged their currency to the euro, so the currency is tied to the euro, they have to be careful what interest rates um, policies that they adapt. Because if they lower interest rates, we know that um, people will want to invest less in Latvian banks, but also Latvians may decide to take their money out of Latvia and invest in banks abroad. And in both scenarios, the value of the Latvian um, currency would become um, worth less than it was before. Now, problematic with that is if you're tying it to the euro, you have to be careful of how you're letting your currency fluctuate. So ideally, an exchange rate should be predictable, consistent, and not open to outside interference by speculators. A past IB report comments, and I've brought this up in, in class, Students were confused between the money supply and currency and suggested that the government could increase the money supply in the country, which would reduce its value and so the exchange rate. This is a common misunderstanding, and I quote from the IB. And we've discussed this in class. So in essence, if you are increasing the money supply, money supply be careful that you're not de facto simply saying then the currency will depreciate. If you increase the money supply, several things might happen. You might want to now buy more imports, so you would then increase your money supply in the foreign exchange market and it would depreciate. You may take some of your, currents, uh, your, your currency that, uh, that you've printed, you may go visit the foreign exchange market and buy up other foreign currencies, either for imports or to add to your foreign currency reserves, and again, your currency would depreciate, but not to assume that simply printing money will lead automatically um, to um, your exchange rate becoming lower. Um, we're actually going to do in class some student presentations on this, but if you miss the class, please do take notes, uh, uh, notes on these pages. Thank you.